Hello everyone. So today I am going to explain Schroeder's theorem with proof. This is lecture 13 on fixed point theory. Now the Schroeder fixed point theorem is an extension of Brauer's fixed point theorem to the topological vector spaces which may be of infinite dimension. So basically Schroeder's fixed point theorem it is an extension of Brauer's fixed point theorem. And we can see easily with the help of this an example. Uh, let's suppose we consider a unit ball B in a Banach space C0 and X is any point from this B. Let's suppose it is having the coordinates X1, X2 and so on. And T be a mapping going from B to B. Like uh, it defined as T of X is 1 minus mod of X1, comma X1, X2 and 3 and so on. Then this mapping is continuous mapping and the norm of Tx minus Ty is equal to norm of x minus y. It is defined like this. So if we suppose that this mapping has a fixed point that means T of x is equal to x. Then comparing the coefficients of each coordinate we will get x1 is equal to x2 is equal to x3 is equal to x4 and so on. Which is possible only when it is equal to 0 because it is lying in the unit pole. Right. So all these are 0 implies that 1 minus mod of x1 is also 0 and which gives us the contradiction. Right. So it cannot be 0 because uh, we get uh, x1 is 0 which is a contradiction because from here we get x1 is equal to uh, mod of x1 is equal to 1. So that's not possible. So that means our position is wrong. So this implies that T has no fixed point. So this is an example of infinite dimension where Brauer's fixed point theorem fails. Now what this theorem says, the shorter theorem says that let K be a non-empty compact convex subset of a Banach space X and suppose F is a mapping going from K to K which is continuous then F has at least one fixed point. Right? So we are given any Banach space X and K any non-empty compact convex subset. F is a mapping which is continuous going from K to K. Then this theorem says F has at least one fixed point. Now since K is compact and F is continuous then FK which is a range of this set it is pre-compact. Pre-compact means compact rel relatively which further implies that it should be totally bounded. So by the definition of totally bounded means for each n any natural numbers there exists some members from this fk which is f y1 y2 till up to yn such that for any x belonging to k the difference of the norms of f of x and yi it is very very small it is less than 1 by n so let's suppose for each n we have such elements in fk such that this thing holds so depending on this we can define a sequence alpha ax as it is a max of 1 by n minus norm of fx minus yi comma 0. So if this value is 0 then the max value will be 0. Right. So alpha ax is basically greater than equals to 0. So this is a sequence for each. Thus for each x belonging to k there must exist at least one i for which this should be known 0. Right? Because we know that the norm of fx minus y i uh, is less than strictly less than 1 by n. Right? So the 1 by n minus this thing be strictly greater than 0 for at least one i. So that means alpha i x should be known 0 for at least one i. Now we can define a shorter operator which is a mapping going from k to k as uh, we can define pnx as the linear combination of alpha x into yi divided by alpha i. This is a question basically. So what we know that we know that this pnx is a member of k. This is convex combination of the elements of yi. And also we know that f is continuous 
so with this implies that alpha is also continuous because what are your alpha is they are uh, the max of uh, 1 by n minus uh, norm of fx minus y i comma 0 so either this function is 0 or uh, the difference of th these and since f is continuous so this implies that alpha is also continuous so alpha is continuous mapping uh, this is a continuous function now we can define kn as a convex hull and this is a convex hull of uh, the elements y1 uh, the set y1 y2 till up to yn and then kn it is bounded it is closed convex subset of finite dimensional Banach space because y1 y2 yn they are finite numbers and it is a spanned by these such numbers so this is bounded it is closed and it is convex subset of finite dimensional space because basically kn is a subset of k and k is um, compact and convex right so kn is also convex KS is kns are bounded and closed also because they are the linear combinations of finite elements right. so we can apply Broad's theorem on pns okay so uh, by using Broad's theorem then each of the mapping pn they, it should have a fixed point in kn and basically in k because kn are the subsets of k now given that k is compact so we should have a sequence uh, uh, subsequence x and k of x n which converges in k so say x and k converges to x in k so what we observe that for any n pnx no minus fx now you can substitute the value of uh, pnx it is uh, this linear combination and you can subtract fx so we get this thing and this inner number uh, this is strictly less than 1 by n so you can replace this is by 1 by n into summation of alpha x divide by a summation of alpha x so this will be cancelled out we get a 1 by n so basically norm of pnx minus fx is strictly less than 1 by n now we want to show that fx has a fixed point and by Brouwer's theorem this has a fixed point right so uh, for sequence x and k the norm of x and k minus fx norm is same as that uh, by triangles inequality we can add uh, this fx and xk okay and uh, further uh, since uh, each pn is uh, having a fixed point so x and k is same as that p and k x and k right and by a previous uh, uh, part in the previous slide that this is strictly less than 1 by n so whenever you are n k when you are k going to infinity this will be going to 0 moreover this also going to 0 because uh, x and k converges to x and f is continuous so this also going to 0 right so this is going to 0 this going to 0 so this implies that this also going to 0 right and we know that x and k it going to x when as k is going to infinity because this subsequence is converging to x in k so we have norm of x minus fx it should goes to 0 as k goes to infinity and which implies that x should be equal to fx and this implies that f has a fixed point in k and this proves the theorem this completes the proof of the theorem